Hello there, welcome to a presentation on the computing indices of matrices of uh, order two by two. My name is Charles Wilsfani Msipa. The approach I'm going to use here to get the inverse of a two by two is an approach which you are going to be able to extend to a matrix of uh, three by three and up to a matrix of order n by n. So starting with the two by two, Let's look at the following uh, matrix. Remember, we started with a general matrix of two by two with entries A, B, C, D, and uh, we worked out using systems of linear, simultaneous linear equations that the inverse would look like this. But now we want to relook at this and see what you can get from here. First of all, we noticed that the denominator here, we noticed before that the denominator here is what we call the determinant. So we can say in short, if you're given A like this, the inverse is 1 over the determinant multiplied by this kind of matrix. So what you want to do is to sort of work out a way and see a kind of a systematic approach of, for getting this kind of matrix. So what you can do now for the first time is we come to matrix A here and basically do away with row 1 and column 1. And then we get... Yeah, you see that if we, if we delete Kuro 1 and column 1, we remain with D, which is this entry. And let's call that minor of matrix A at position 1, 1, and that will be D. And when you come to this, this will be minor of matrix A at position 1, 2. So we now delete the first row and the second column, like 1 here stands for row, 2 for the column. Then we're left with C. That's that. Then coming here, we delete the second row, the second row and the first column, and we're left with B. And then lastly, we delete the second row and the second column, and we're left with A. And let's call this, this uh, entry, this uh, MRC. I've named this by, in terms of uh, row and column. We call the let's call them minus of the matrix A, like I've denoted here. I'm denoting minus of matrix A. In just in short, I'm going to write here M R C. Then coming here, what we're going to do now, we collect those minus and they put them in a matrix form. And then let's call this matrix of minus, and this is minus of matrix A. I just sort here M of A, meaning minus of matrix A, they form this kind of matrix taken in that order which you go there. Now, we want to compare this matrix with the matrix you've got here. Notice one thing which is interesting here is that we have managed to get the main diagonal of that matrix, but on the second diagonal, this matrix is quite different from that. That means we should go further and see how can we get that so it is now we have managed to see how we can get the main diagram of that. So coming here, looking at the difference between the, let's just go back a bit. The difference which we, we have here between this matrix and that is the signs. Minus, it C there is in my negative and the B is negative. And the position also is not the, the position of B there, is not the position of B here. So that's what we should know. So what do we do now? Let's sort out the issues of signs, of the signs. But most important, you must notice that these signs, if we move, maybe let's say, let's move clockwise like this, we can see that these signs alternate from plus, negative, plus, negative. So that alt alternating kind of effect, we need to sort of carry it somehow. Let's come here. The alternating effect, we're going to carry it this way. Like if we, you are here at, um, I was saying here, the sign of the minor RC, we can get it this way. For example, if we're in position 1, 1 here, we we'll say minus 1 to the power 1 plus 1, which will be minus 1 to the power 2. Then that will be plus. Then we get here the sign is a plus sign. Then if we come to this one, we'll get the sign of minor 1, 2 will be minus 1 to uh, to the power 1 plus 2, which would be 3, then we put in three negative signs, then we put a negative there for B, which is this one. Then, if we continue with that, 
we'll see that it designs are going to alternate exactly like we have got there. So then this takes us to the following. We sort of multiply each of these uh, entries by this kind of uh, factor, and then the product of uh, the minor, uh, the minor, and um, the minor, and this we'll call it a core factor. And then this takes us to the following. Once you carry out that multiplication, what we're going to have now is uh, plus the minus sign there, plus the and minus sign there. Even if we go in the anticlockwise way, we we'll start with the plus here, we we'll come in negative there plus the negative there. So it works whichever direction we follow. Now, what we have now, we have managed to get the diagonal and we've managed to get the negative signs for B and C. But now we are left with the position with that. So then let's call this matrix, which is method. Because remember what we said before, we said the product of a minor with uh, this kind of factor is called the cofactor. So what we have got here now, we've changed the naming here. Now we've got C11, meaning the cofactor of A in this position, the cofactor of uh, A in this position, which is minus C, the cofactor of A in this position, which is minus B. In this case, I'm talking about the minor multiplied by this factor. And then similarly there. So let's call this cofactor matrix. And then notice one thing that the position of B and C there is different. So then going forward, how do you achieve the same position like that? Then we come to this. There is the matrix which is different from that. If we note that if we take its transpose, which is C transpose, now the row becomes column and this second row becomes a column. Then we put exactly that matrix. And then we call that matrix the adjoint of A. Now, it looks like now, if we now adopt this name, what did you say? We'll say now, if we're given a matrix like this, the inverse will be one over the determinant multiplied by the adjoint of A. The adjoint of A which we can get by following the process which we have just uh, described up to here. Then from this position, I think now we can take an example of a matrix which we have looked at before and they try to follow this process to calculate the inverse. Let's say we're given a matrix A. We saw this matrix before. This matrix C is um, 2, 3, 2, 4. Now, first of all, whenever we're given a matrix to check, uh, we've got to check whether it has got an inverse then what we can do now, we can calculate the determinant of A. In this case, we saw before that this is 8 minus 6. That would be 2 times 4 minus 2 times 3, which would be equals to 2. So this matrix is non-singular. Determinant is not equal to 0. Then what we're going to do now, we're going to now to move a bit faster from this one. Remember, now we're going to say cofactor 1, 1. What is cofactor 1, 1? Cofactor 1, 1 basically is that factor 1, um, 1 to the power 1 plus 1 multiplied. In this case, the minus in this position is uh, 4, which is our D according to the matrix which you have. Then C12 will be the cofactor, that factor, which is now going to be 1 plus 2 times, um, in this case, times uh, 2. In this case, we're going to be dropping row, row 1 and column that, that will be 2. Then C21, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm doing that in order so that I can have a, a kind of a um, one, two, like I'm having a matrix, which I'm going to call cofactor matrix. Then this would be equal to minus one to the power two plus one multiplied by, by three. And then lastly, we've got two, two, C22, two, two, which is going to be minus one to the power two plus two multiplied by um, two. So this is going to give us a cofactor matrix. And then here we see the sign going to be positive. Then we're going to take this as four. And the sign is going to be negative. That is going to be minus two. And the sign there is going to be negative. That will be minus three. And the here is going to be positive. What we've got an even number of negative sign. That would be two. And then the next thing now, 
we have to get this matrix we call the adjoint of A, which is nothing other than C transpose. In other words, the row becomes rows becomes column. So in this case, you're going to have this row becoming column, we read it as four minus two. And this row becoming column that we read it as minus three two. Then once you've got that, we know that the inverse now is um, equals to one over the determinant, which is in this case one over two, multiplied by the adjoint, which is this one, that will be um, four minus three minus two and two. Now quickly, we can now try to multiply A by A inverse, which we know that is going to be same as A minus uh, inverse times A. So I'm going to take it in this order. We are going to have here half multiplied by four minus three minus two, two. Multiply by A, which is this case, which is two, two, three, four. And then our common factor will leave it for a while outside there. And then multiply. What we're going to have here is going to be two times three minus three times two. So which is going to be four times two minus or say plus minus three by two. Coming to this one, that will be minus two times two plus two times two. Then taking this column now, multiplying there, that will be three, four times three plus minus three times four. And then this is going to be minus um, minus two times three plus two times four. I think you can see that what we get here, we're getting here eight minus three minus six, which is a two, and they were getting a zero, and they were getting another zero, and you are getting eight minus six, you can, which is a two, and then there we are, we get our identity once we've multiplied by this half, which is one, zero, zero, one. So which means this is a effective way of calculating uh, inverse of a two by two. And the good thing about this uh, method is that we are going to be able to extend this to um, a method of three by three and of any order n. So let's continue with this and see what, what else do we get from this uh, presentation. I have labeled this bonus from this, uh, what we've just seen here. So we started the matrix A, B, C like that. And we know that the determinant of A plus B is this. That's what we know. That's the determinant of uh, A, A, D minus B, C. Now, what I want to do now here, we just want to do some kind of exploration here. Let's take um, the, uh, let's sort of move this way. And as you move this way, along this matrix, in, in this direction, in this matrix, we'll take A and the B. Now, if we multiply here by A, now is this position A11, this minor A11 multiplied by this cofactor here. What's going to happen? We're going to have A, D. And if we come this side, what we're going to have, we're going to have plus B times minus C. And what we get here, simple A, D minus B, C, which is exactly that. Now, if we move in this direction and they follow this direction, that matrix, what are we going to have here? We take this entry here, multiply this, 
we're going to have a d and when you come to this position you take that entry there we're going to have what uh, we're going to have plus c multiplied by minus b and again we get a d minus b c and then you can try we can now try to move in this direction if you move in that direction we'll be following this row and then if we do that what are going to get here when you get here and there we're going to multiply the c multiply by minus b minus b coming from this position and come here get a d plus d multiplied by a which is exactly the same thing as a d for that minus b c so what does it tell us it means it says now now look at the way as i was speaking this thing this 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 way these are cofactors and these are minus which of that here so using the cofactors and minus we can actually determine determinant of a matrix so we can practice that also we know to go to calculate determinant this way and now we have just discovered that we can also follow uh, use the matrix and these cofactors just take the positions and multiply them upon that in any direction you will try this one on your own you will see that you are going to get the what the determinant so here's another way of uh, computing determinants using cofactors and the minor so now what we can do now is to do some few examples and this and some practice now here's an example it says given the matrices a b c and d determine which of uh, the matrices have inverse so then let's just say the solution i'm just going to uh, do one or two just to check whether they have got inverse for part one for inverse what i'm going to do let's check one and sorry let's check a so the determinant of a let's say the determinant of a so what i'm going to do now i'm going to take um, um, that entry i'm going to use this new approach i'm going to take this entry multiplied by the cofactor which is going to be minus one to the power one plus one multiplied by the minor in this case which will be four because i will drop row one uh, row one and column one i will give four then plus i come this side i'll take the entry which is minus two and then the cofactor being minus one to the power one plus two multiplied by three so I've taken this row. So I want to do to, to do the same thing using that uh, this uh, so this one uh, using this this column. So using this column, I'll start by minus two there, multiply by minus one to the power one plus two, multiply by the minor in this case, which will be three, after deleting row one and the column two, plus coming here I'll, we get that four multiplied by the cofactor minus one to the power two plus two multiplied by one so then this simplify the what you get there this is a positive sign that before that before that before then here this will be a negative sign and there is a negative sign there that will be, uh, that will be you now that the, this the two negative sign are going to keep us positive. You have minus one there, which is we count minus one times this, which will be two, then two times three, that will be six. So this will be plus six, which will give us that the determinant is equals to ten. Then coming this side, what we have here, we've got a negative sign there, negative sign there, that will give us a positive, then times three, that will give us six. And here you put an even number of negative signs by one by four that will give us four and again this would be what ten and if we try our old approach that would be 
determinant of 1 minus 2, 3, 4, that would be 4, 1 times 4 minus, in brackets, minus 2 times 3, which is the give us 4 plus 6, which is equal to 10. So, in this case, in this question, uh, answering this first question now, we'll say A has a, an inverse. Now, I will test also another matrix, let's say C. C determined there is, you can write it this way, 4, 16, and 3, 12. Now we can use our method, our old method, multiply this by that, we get 48, and then minus that and that, we also know that is 48, and that is equal to 0. So we we'll say C is singular, because it is equal to 0, so C has no inverse, therefore C has no inverse. And then after that now, we can now maybe let's say compute the the inverse of A, then that's what we're looking for. So the determinant already of got, what you can write here, you can say A inverse is equal to 1 over 10. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get a cofactor matrix for this one, which we can now do very quickly. What you can do now, when we drop this row, drop that row, that column will to 4, and this one will be positive, that will be 4. And now coming this side, we drop this row and this column, we'll have to 3, but in that position, the sign will be negative 3. And then similarly, when you come this side, you drop this row and that column, we're left with minus 2, but the sign, the, the, the 1 to the power 3 will be negative, then we're left with the 2. And then coming to this row, to this position now, the cofactor will be, you drop this row, drop that row, and multiply by minus 1 to the power 2, which will give us 1. So that will be our cofactor matrix. So now the adjoint will be the transpose of this. That will give us 4 minus 3, 2, 1 by just changing the column, the rows of this matrix to the columns or columns to the rows. Then we've got the 4, 2, minus 3, and 1. So I urge you to maybe sit down and do this calculation and see, verify that uh, this is really the inverse of that matrix A. I was, at this point, I think I've given you enough examples Please try to do the other, uh, check the other two matrices you didn't, uh, didn't do with you, and they also practice this kind of uh, uh, exercises. Now, briefly, what I want to uh, conclude in this is to go back to this exercise which we saw before. You remember what we said here, we're solving an equation like this. When we get here, we said we could view this as uh, this system given matricial as 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, multiplied by the column vector of the unknowns and equals to 1, 3. But uh, remembering what we said about using uh, matrix inverse to solve the equation, you, this identity here would come as uh, the quotient matrix inverse multiplied by the quotient matrix multiplied by the vector of the unknowns x equals 2 to, to b. So this identity comes from a situation like this. Already looking at this, I think it suggests that maybe using this uh, row transformation, equivalent row transformation, it is possible to determine the inverse. And that's exactly what we're going to look at in the near future. So we are going then later to learn how to use matrix inversion to compute the inverse, which will be an additional approach to what we've just seen using cofactors and the uh, cofactors leading to a joint matrix. Others at this point, I would like to say thank you for listening. Enjoy your practice of this kind of work. And later we're going to see how we can this approach to a three by three and to any n by n square matrix.